Hi, I'm Brad, and this is Kathy, and we're Davis Bradley. And we want to say a very special welcome to our friends at the Goodwin House. We sure do miss you guys. And we miss performing for you, too, and we look forward to the time where we can come back and do it live for you. But until then, sit back and enjoy the Davis Bradley Show. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
put it on a brand new gospel CD, all gospel CD, and uh, we uh, had finished the CD in the studio, but it's not yet in the plastic, but we are enjoying playing some songs uh, from the CD. Coming soon, and if you remember the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, you would remember hearing this song in the soundtrack, and boy, it goes way back, but it's a really old song. Help us out now with a little bit of I Went Down to the River to Pray. <laughs>
to the river to pray. All right, thank you, everybody. And um, we're going to do another song for you. This is uh, this song goes, goes back quite a ways. Um, I don't know how old it actually is, but I remember my mom used to sing it to me when I was young. It was really a lot of fun to hear her sing it. I think it was about 50, 60 verses. Uh, are we going to do all 50 or 60 verses? It might be I don't like know. 39. I remember that Brad said his mom would sing this to him at night to help him to go to sleep. I don't know how that worked out, but you know. Yeah, it was a work in progress. <laughs> Uh, I just need to change tune in here a little bit. Uh, this is a this is a great old tune, like like Brad said, goes way back. I'm sure it'll strike a memory with you. Ah, and as always, go. sing along with us now, okay? Here we go. together so oh, I've got to add the foot tambourine <laughs> we got things going on down below I know you can hear the drums so help us out sing along if you know here we go <laughs> Somewhere working, I'll be somewhere working, I'll be somewhere. 
Lighthouse for watching. And we have a lot more great music coming up, so sit back and enjoy. great classic country tunes alive. We grew up with all this great music. We got another one here, right? Yeah, here's a song. Uh, this goes back to uh, Ray Price and the Cherokee Cowboys. Wow, what a great name. <laughs> if you're a fan of country music, you probably remember Ray Price. It's called I'll Be There. Ain't no chain strong enough to hold me. Ain't no breeze big enough to slow have seen a river that's too wide. Ain't no jail tight enough to lock me. Ain't no man big enough to stop me. I'll be there. Been on the other side. Love me if you're ever gonna love me. Never have seen Ain't no chain strong enough to hold me Ain't no 
that's a fun song. Ray Price back in his day he had a whole big group with them and they were all really duded up in fancy outfits and two fiddles and I mean it, it was a big event when uh, when they would play a song. Yeah. You oh. should try that on. You should get all duded up. Yeah, I should get all duded up. <laughs> but uh, we're going to do another song for you from a country artist. This fella is uh, maybe a little lesser known. He's a wonderful songwriter. Uh, he has some roots here in Virginia. His mom lived over in uh, Madison County, not too far from Culpeper. And, um, and he lived in Nashville. He had one of those little private airplanes. And uh, they say when he'd come visit his mom and have lunch with her, he'd land, land the plane right in the middle of her cornfield. Wow. Have, figure. have lunch and then fly right back out of the cornfield. Yeah, so. you better not let that get out. If my mom hears that, or she'll, that's yeah. what she'll want me to do, you know. Yeah, you should take your plane. Yeah, well, I don't have a plane. <laughs> she doesn't have a cornfield, so I don't know. We're kind of up the creek there. But. Well, uh, this is one that he wrote. His name is Marvin Rainwater. And um, and this was a hit song for him. It was also a hit song for uh, Hank Snow, Brenda Lee, Kitty Wells, uh, many more in a version that we like most of all by uh, Porter Wagner and Skeeter Davis. Wow, well, I'll be Skeeter. Here. Okay, well that's that's fair. You know, I'm happy to be Porter. <laughs> all right. And uh, it's called "Gonna Find Me a Bluebird."
Brad's got a concert size ukulele. Boy, that thing's all duded up there. It's pretty fancy. It tells my life story. It's a good conversation piece, <laughs> I guess. Now, the ukulele comes in uh, a lot of different sizes. This, this is the second smallest in the ukulele family. There's one smaller, and there's a few larger. There's This is a concert size. There's a soprano, which is smaller. Then there's a tenor, a baritone, and a bass ukulele is what uh, Kat is holding. Bass. Another great country classic tune. Everywhere we go, everybody loves Hank Williams. I'm sure you're all no exception here. Help us out. You're going to know this one. jot down a few words and it would turn into a hit song always inevitably maybe we should try that instead of tossing out yeah. the napkins on maybe, maybe we overthink it while we're all geared up here let's do one more Hank Williams tune help us out here Thank you. 
It's probably pretty good. I mean, I, I heard the heads are bitter. Yeah, so we'll just avoid the heads, right? Go for the rest of it. Do you want to play the auto harp? I would love to play the auto harp. What'd you have in mind? I don't know. Let's do something by the Carter family. All right. This auto harp that I'm getting ready to play is pretty special. Yeah, um, my ha mom had bought it around 1960 with S&H Green Stamps. And she used to play it at the kitchen table, and, uh, and a lot of these same songs that, that we're still doing. And um, well, I remember S and H Green Stamps. <laughs> My mama would have me licking them things and putting them in the. You got to use a sponge, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was hardcore at my house. Boy, the Carter family. What an amazing family trailblazed music for many, recording over 300 songs. That's a whole lot of songs. That is a whole lot. And this is one of the earlier ones that they did. We enjoyed some of their um, first recordings. The songs were pretty simple. Yeah. Had a good message. I think the simpler the better. That's it. We're simple people, so that works for us. You're all going to remember this. Help us out. The Red River Valley. <laughs> was also very common for the Carter family. You would have seen a guitar played similar to the style that Brad is playing. They called it the uh, Maybell Scratch, right? Carter Scratch. The Carter Scratch. She would uh, use that picking style along with the auto harp. Old time banjo. Boy, they were talented. They were a talented trio. This was Maybell's trademark song. She first recorded this when she was 19 years old, The Wildwood Flower. Twine with my people, my people, my people, my 
together, whether they be the same songs or in this case, completely different songs. The style of banjo that we're playing is the old time claw hammer style, the open back banjos. You notice these are two different sizes. Got the larger head. It's not that mine's better. Well, necessarily but probably not but <laughs> it's just the the larger it is the deeper sound it makes kind of like the violin family the, the big bass fiddle makes a very deep sound compared to the small violin so right so it kind of makes it nice to play them in harmony to each other so what do we got there um well we like to take like Kathy was saying sometimes we take two different songs and mix them together um we've done it a few times with some square dance songs which are kind of similar um but we thought maybe the more different the songs were, the more challenging it would be to mix them together. So, uh, so we, we thought about what are some more different songs that we know. So here's the first one we came up with. See if you recognize this one. Remember that one? I do. I remember. <laughs> Excuse me. I wish I was in the land of cotton. Uh, written by Daniel Decatur Emmett, who is from Ohio, although he wished he was from the land of cotton. He wrote it back in the, cotton, right? it's That's the fabric true. of our lives. He wrote it back in the 1800s, and uh, we mix it with this song. <laughs> I, I don't like it when I when I don't know what something means. And then that song was always confusing to me. What, what do they mean when they say, stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni? I thought that was like maybe the craziest lyrics that I ever heard in a song. It was song. fun to sing as a kid though, right? It would, and then as a kid, I didn't question it as much. But then when we started doing it again, I said, what does that mean? So, uh, so I looked it up and I found that uh, back in the days of old England, uh, when uh, the Revolutionary War was going on, the British soldiers would come over and they would sing that song to taunt the American soldiers. And uh, back in old England, if you were an uh, aristocrat or what we call a highfalutin gentleman, you would, um, let's say a member of parliament or a lawyer or something like this, when you left the house in the morning, you'd put on your white wig. And uh, you've probably seen pictures of that or, or remember that from movies. And uh, the fancier person you were, the better wig you could afford. And some of the best wigs had those tight, tight curls on it that they called macaroni curls or macaroni wig. And um, 
So uh, here in this country, in the days of the Revolutionary War, when most people were frontiersmen, uh, the British would say that those Yankees simply stick a feather in their cap and call it macaroni, meaning they think of themselves as some highfalutin people because uh, they're just wearing an old cap with a feather in it. So, uh, so it's interesting to find out what some of these things mean. Now, um, I don't know about you, but our, our, lives, our lives are probably not a whole lot better from knowing, but I always say, yeah, but we learned something. But we learned something, and it's nice to learn things. But if you find yourself a contestant on Jeopardy or something, just remember where you learned that information. Right here. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So we'll try. We'll put them both together. And like Kathy says, if we do our job right, it should sound pretty good most of the time. All right, here we go. It's hot for Luton here. Here we go. Two, three, four. <laughs>
just wanted to say thank you again for watching. And we sure appreciate you, our friends at the Goodwin House, for joining us. And we're going to see you again real soon.